Oh my god. I swear it was a bright and sunny warm day and the second I hit record, we have clouds. Okay, hopefully that's better, but if not, we're just gonna pretend I got a 10. Welcome back to my channel, you guys, we are finally gonna do a tutorial. But before we do, if you're watching this video on the Sunday that it comes out, which is the 4th of September, today is actually my mum's birthday, so everyone go into the comments and leave her a little birthday message because she for sure reads them. However, this also means that we are officially in Virgo season. It's okay, we'll get through it together. But Virgo season for me is all about finding gaps in our skills and knowledge and fixing them. And that is exactly what I want to do this month and fix a gap that I've noticed in my painting of late, and that is lighting. I've definitely received a couple of comments saying that I really need to work on my lighting skills, which I super appreciate your feedback on my art because you guys are seeing it from a completely new perspective than I am. So um, you probably have better insight into what works and what doesn't with my art. So I really appreciate that. Besides dramatic lighting is like the secret source of appealing art or as Uncle Roger would put it, it is the MSG of good painting. So all through this month, I wanna focus on really drilling in dramatic lighting into our visual library and muscle memory so that when it comes time to create original paintings, dramatic lighting is our default state. So if you'll indulge me, I wanna start with just one dramatic key light today, and then as the month goes on, we'll add more light sources. Of course, if you enjoyed this video and learned something today then please remember to like and comment below and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out the rest of the series the rest of this month but without much further ado here's dramatic lighting part one So like with any skill, we're going to start with applying dramatic lighting to some simple forms. I started off by testing a few dramatic light sources. The brush I'm using today is actually a chalk brush from the MedMap brush kit. I converted it for Krita last week and this is pretty much the main brush I'm going to be using today. Maybe some airbrush later as well as a pencil brush for details, but anyway. As you can see, I started with four spheres and colored them a semi dark gray. Usually I like to start with a 50% mid-tone gray but since I know I have a tendency to overexpose things I'm trying to set myself up for success by going a little darker right from the very beginning. I'm testing out a bunch of different light positions and I find that the easiest way to do this is not by placing the highlight but rather the shadow. A lot of the times dramatic lighting usually means dramatic shadows and while you wouldn't necessarily go this dark in a portrait, today we're pushing the limit. So after putting down a bunch of light positions, I'm most drawn to the third one because I don't usually paint my key light to come from the top right. So now that we've selected a lighting setup. This is where the second and in my opinion the more important part of the drill comes in. We're gonna apply this lighting to a couple more shapes. For the purpose of this video I'm only doing a cube and a cylinder since those are most frequently found in the face and body but you can feel free to do all kinds of shapes, wedges, donuts, half pipes, pyramids, go nuts. There is nothing to lose and everything to gain from doing so many. The one important rule I want to mention is that dramatic lighting isn't about going super bright with the light and super dark with the shadows. This actually hit me hard when I was rendering these forms. As it turns out, making a lighting scenario dramatic is actually about the midtones. In fact, think about it as being the opposite of diffuse lighting. In diffuse light, also known as beauty lighting, there is a gradual transition from highlight to shadow. So you have 
several mid-tones in between. So the opposite of this wouldn't be just to up the contrast and keep it diffuse. The opposite would be to have fewer mid-tones in between. So instead of simply darkening the shadows, we want to bring the shadows and highlights physically closer to each other and only have a very narrow band of mid-tones. See how big the difference is? So when I render these shapes, I'm not just upping the contrast, I'm also narrowing the band of mid-tones significantly. And now for the crowning moment of this drill, we're actually going to arrange these basic forms into a bunch of different mini scenes. This is the bit that most of us don't think to do when it comes to drills, but I want you to drill it into your mind that it is not enough to learn how to render shapes in isolation. You need to know how they look when put together. How do they interact with each other? What shadows do they cast? Which edges are preserved and which ones are lost? Because when you're painting a character or a scene, it is not just going to be a bunch of isolated shapes, right? The objects in your scene interact with each other and create a harmony of light and shadow. So whatever the shapes you've rendered, make sure you run a few different combinations of how they work in a scene together. And finally, for a bit of extra credit with these drills, you can practice throwing some color onto the shapes. I primarily wanted to focus on the skin since that is what we're gonna paint today. So I went in with a few different skin tones on my basic objects. Remember that not only is the shadow darker, it is usually also a complementary tone to the highlight. And since skin generally has a red, orange, or yellow hue, the complementary tone is gonna range from green to purple. Of course, I didn't explicitly take into account subsurface scattering here, but I actually wanted the shadows and highlights to be cooler and have a warm mid-tone to kind of emulate that effect. You can of course do several passes and really perfect these basic shapes, but I was too excited to finally get to the actual painting, so let's go ahead and do that. Now, generally speaking, I like to have a proper sketch in place before I render, but I wanted to switch things up for this painting. So while we do have a vague idea of the pose, I actually went straight in with the values and began to indicate the solid shadows. Again, we want the light to come down from the top right corner of the canvas, so the shadows are going to be heaviest on the bottom left. I then went ahead and darkened the base canvas, again just to set the tone for the painting. Now this is where the magic happens. With a super bright tone, I jumped in to place the highlights, and like we saw earlier in the video, you want to make sure that the mid-tone is at a minimum. So instead of having a diffused mid-tone where the light falls, off, we simply just paint a smaller area of light and let most of it stay in the shadow. Once I was semi-pleased with the values, I created a new layer and set it to color blending mode, then went in with the colors that I wanted. Obviously, it is super muddy at this stage, but we'll refine it, don't worry. Even now, the only brushes I'm really using are the chalk brush for most of the rendering and a giant airbrush for the more subtle gradients. Looking back at the process, I will say I wish I hadn't gone in with a tiny brush radius on that chalk brush and painted the little details this early in the painting, but hey, it just means I've got to be more conscious with the next one, right? But my absolute favorite part was painting that eye on the shadow side of her face. Very few actually visible details, but look how well it reads as an actual eye. Honestly, this lighting turned out very Rembrandt, which is where you see that little triangle of light on the shadow side of the face, and I now see why they say this is the most flattering light for portraits. Look how cool it is. Also, oh my gosh, adding the little specular spots in the eyes, especially in the shadow region, makes her look so spooky. I love it. I ended up changing up her hand just because it looked very unnatural, and this way I could add a little more story. I decided to give her a couple of witchy looking finger rings, and as well as drip some blood down her fingers. I wanted this piece to be all about obsession, how it consumes us and pushes us to do things that we 
we know we shouldn't. And I'm so happy with how the lighting helps the story along, because it is one of those dark side feelings that we all have and most of us seem to keep it well hidden. I used an airbrush set to overlay and went over the lighter areas just to up the contrast a little bit and the rest of the piece was pretty much just rendering. Again, keeping in mind the super narrow mid-tone, we don't want to diffuse it out too much. And after a few more hours of rendering, here is this week's painting, Obsession. I don't know about you, but I definitely feel supercharged today. There is something just so magical about adding drama that makes your painting so instantly eye-catching. I hope you found this video enlightening. No! Sorry, but um, if you have enjoyed this video and learned something today, please do remember to like and subscribe. It means the whole world to me. And like I said, it is my mom's birthday, so make sure you leave a comment below wishing her happy birthday. It will mean the world to her as well. You can always check out all of my art over on my Instagram and come say hi in the DMs or just on my Discord server. And if you'd like to support this channel directly, then please do remember to check out my Patreon for exclusive content. I'll leave all of the links to everything down in the description below but with all of that said thank you so so much for hanging out and painting with me today i hope you've enjoyed it as much as i have check out some more videos up here and i'll see you guys on the next one bye